five, and I'm speaking to Mr. Abraham Hyman. Right. I was the assistant advisor on Jewish affairs um, from about September 1946 until um, I think it was March or so of 1950. Uh, I was the last of the advisors on Jewish affairs and closed that office uh, in March um, of 19, uh, 1950. Um, in that capacity, I we were, uh, was in close touch with all the chaplains who served in the DP um, period and uh, all the chaplains during that period who served in Germany and in Austria and can tell you that the chaplains did not come, chaplains would, did not become involved with the Jewish displaced persons by any prearranged program. They had no, at the, at the outset, the chaplains were simply chaplains assigned to the army. They were members of the armed forces of the United States who had assignments as chaplains, as spiritual advisors to the Jewish soldiers in the American army. The thing that um, converted them into, into active participants in the DP program came as a result of their own initiative. Such, for example, Abe Klausner had a military assignment. As a matter of fact, he was, uh, I think he was even threatened with court-martial, or he had to rummage for his food. He, he, he simply forgot about his military assignments and saw a need to help Jews. He, he did not serve and this is the thing that, I, that I, I, I'm going to ask you, what your approach is. None of these chaplains, uh, to the extent that they were involved among, with work among the D DPs, were engaged in, 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 in work that related to their profession. This is, they were social workers. They were involved Jewish leaders. Do you understand the difference? Yes, well... In other words... For, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I would say this, that uh, most rabbis, at least today, uh, seem to be social workers in their own right because they have to, uh, not by profession, but by, uh, or not by design, but uh, by uh, necessity. In that, in that, that, well, in the army they had to do counseling in the, uh, as chaplains. In a congregation today, a great deal of the time that a rabbi spends is in counseling uh, people about all types of problems. I know, I know what I know what the rabbis do because my father was a rabbi. So no, and, that, and I that doesn't I mean that they are prepared for that. No, no, I'm not. Uh, you don't understand my distinction. A rabbi in his congregation is hired is it not as a social worker. He's hired as a rabbi, right? Right. But what I'm saying is, in reality, he really is a he is a social worker. Right. Writer. I understand you. But these men were hired to do a job which they completely overlooked. Right. They did not serve as chaplains. Right. In other words, Abe Klausner, when Abe Klausner, who's probably the most active man in, in throughout the whole period, he did more to um, give direction to the Jewish DPs, interested in their welfare, or helped organize them, helped, let's say, make a list of all of the uh, survivors, Sherita so that you, the Sharita Pleita published, uh, I think, one or two volumes. Three volumes. He, during the entire period, after he became aware of the plight of the uh, Jewish survivors, he forgot about his chaplaincy altogether. It would be just like a rabbi saying, "I'm very sorry, I'm not available for Friday night morning for for any religious services." Right. Do you understand the difference? Oh yeah, I, these, I, I understand that. Yes. Okay, now these people. When you try to say, when you, try to, when you write about, if I were writing about the chaplains, as a matter of fact, I'm going to include them in my book, I'm going to say they forgot about being chaplains. They were, they were something, something else. Yeah, they I, did I not was, act in the chaplain's capacity. I, I think that the problem would be in that, and uh, that there were some that did, to a great degree. Klausner is, is the opposite, is, is, the, now, is the 
atypical, but there are other people that, that forgot also. You have Lipman and others, I don't want to, for the record, to state all of them. Uh, but um, there were, on the other hand, uh, chaplains who were very much concerned with with uh, s still realizing that they were um, chaplains yeah. in the army. Yeah, but these yeah but these chaplains <laughs> were almost unknown to us. I mean, we saw them we saw them as members of our staff, I as see. people involved with the Jewish DPs because a they're informed people, they know how to handle problems, they knew the needs of the people, they knew the history of these people. They were Jews. They were involved informed Jews, just like the staff of the JDC. For example, in, um, in my um, research, I'm interested in knowing how the JDC recruited people. What were their qualifications? Mm -hmm. Many of these people did not have social service backgrounds. They were interested. Do you understand? That was the main, that's the main contribution, the principal contribution, the principal prerequisite of the, the Jewish chaplain, his concern deep concern for the welfare of these people. And, and how they performed depended entirely upon their initiative. Once the army saw, by the way, how well they performed, what they did, they stopped bothering them. You see, they had their... Yes and no. Yes, in a way they did. Uh, they, they gave them all the latitude that uh, yeah, they wanted. Okay. Depending upon the, their forcefulness, of course, they, if, if, there were, if there were services to be performed, they were there at the service and they had pro forma, do you understand? Sure. But their principal, the people that we knew as involved with the Jewish right. DPs, was not an accidental. It became the... It, the primary concern. It became the, I'll put it this way, it became their vocation. Right. Not their okay. avocation. No, not, no question. The principal instead of the incidental No thing. question. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now how they performed, it, it, how each of these performed, you can say that thing generally, depend, dependent entirely upon his sense of dedication, it's a sense, it's the same thing, how, do, how does the rabbi perform? How seriously does he take his place? Well, his but this was a time of crisis when... There were a lot of people who did not respond to that crisis. A number of the chaplains did not respond to the crisis. Uh, who, who in particular? Who I'm not going to mention names. Well, for his third... I will not mention names. Mm -hmm. I, in my book, I'm not going to mention names, and I'm certainly not going to put any man on uh, in a position where he has to defend his record. No, well, I wouldn't... I wouldn't be interested in knowing for, from uh, putting it down in the book. It's simply a matter that if I were to get information that's wrong. I'm not, no, I, I look. I want to. I want to read to you something. Okay. I wrote. Uh, it's, you know, in every office, there are certain people that have certain responsibilities. I was the assistant to Bill Haver, the advisor on Jewish affairs. Bill is a. Bill, Dr. William Haver is a supreme administrator. If ever I learned, I learned nothing from him. I learned the importance of administration from him. He wrote reports and insisted that they be written in full reports. If you go through the JDC files, or my own files in Israel, in, in, in Israel you'll find that during his period, more reports were written to the, um, uh, to the um, uh, five, five cooperating organizations uh, who who were the five, American Jewish Committee, the American Jewish Conference, American Joint Distribution Committee, the Jewish Agency for Palestine, and Jewish Agency for Palestine, and the World Jewish Congress. These were five people, five organizations interested in the DP problem, and they coordinated their efforts. Uh, and, and, and we reported to them, and they circulated among, among their affiliates. I wrote Dr. all of Dr. Haber's reports, full reports. Now, let me get read you something to give you an example of what, is, what does a chaplain do. Here was a labor company organized in 1948. Um, labor company among the DPs who were going to do work, construction work for the army. There were many skills, they were well paid, enough, sufficiently well paid to have attracted quite a few men. They had problems, and it's all dealt with in, the, in this report. Could we, uh, what, where is this from exactly? This is from a report of June 10th, 1948. It so happens, I, I... June 10th, 1948. My, Dr. Haver's report to the five competing, uh, five cooperating organizations. Right, and this is found in which JDC file? 1948. 1948. June 48 to December 48 file. On what? On the, the subject matter is displaced persons. Yeah, the, okay. the, the men complain, listen to this. Yeah. 
the men in the labor battalion complain that when they return to the camps for the weekends they are abused and called traitors because they're supposed to be going to Israel. Instead mm -hmm. of that they accept army, uh, army employment. Do you understand? This is very I'm doing everything I can to neutralize this reaction among the people. This is Haber writing to these organizations. Realizing the public relations importance of this project, I have assigned Chaplain Barish, who recently joined my staff, to make this company and its problems his primary interest. What? What's the connection between that and, 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 and Chaplain's work? Nothing. Nothing. That's it. This is... No, I, I don't want you to think that I don't understand that, and I have yeah. a great appreciation for that. Yeah, okay. I, no, I just want... I'm not... Uh, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything new. This no, is, no, no, but this, I'm is, you, this is what I'm I... I'm you're emphasizing. I want you to... I, I, if you don't emphasize that... Then I've, I've lost the point. Then the you don't point. have no... Please, you have no subject. Right. No question about that. Okay. I I'm just... That. I'm offering that gratuitously on I, the basis... I appreciate On that. the basis of three and a half years of intensive work in this field, uh, which is uh, the equal of uh, anybody who worked in this field. That's the reason uh, a lot of people are interested in me doing this job because I was involved, deeply involved, in, 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 in know the function, the role of each and, each, each and every one of these. Now, um, I don't know, read paragraph, read item 10. This is the same, uh, same report. Same report. Yeah. Curtailment and Chaplain's program. Well, let me, if you're going to read it, I'll read it. No, that's all right. I'll read it. All right? Okay, fine. Okay, this you wrote this anyway. Sure. Okay. I'd rather sure. have the. Uh, I, I'm always. I always know it by heart. I'd rather have the author than. Okay, fine. I mean, it's Dr. No. Haber's report. I yes, understand. I understand. But uh, it's like you know. uh, Dr. Haber is reporting to these five organizations on the curtailment in the chaplains program. He says a combination of circumstances have forced a considerable curtailment in the assignment of Jewish chaplains to work among DPS. From a peak of number of nine that were assigned to do this work, specially for this work. These had, they had no other. So this assignment. is 1946. 48. No, but I'm saying, but, yes. they, but the, they started in 46. Yeah. yeah. There are now six, of whom four are being redeployed or transferred to other assignments because, because the, the number of DPs have been curtailed. They don't have the problem of infiltration and all this, it was the kind of work to which the chaplains mm -hmm. devoted themselves, right. accompanying trains and so forth to see that nothing happened on the borders and all that, you know. Uh, so they had to... They, 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 they reduce the numbers. One of the two remaining chaplains is Chaplain Louis Barish, who, as I indicated, is now assigned to my office. It's uh, indicated before because we're talking about the the uh, labor company in the previous paragraph. Right. right. One one replacement, a chaplain of considerable experience and tested in DP work, is expected to arrive this month. Under my arrangement with the military, we will be allowed two itinerant chaplains to work in the field, and one to work out of my office. The chaplain Barish will remain in his office. To itinerary chaplains, this answers the question that you put to to Haber. They moved around. Itinerant means the whole area, right. the whole U.S.-owned Germany. Right? I have written Rabbi Lev of the Jewish Welfare Board a detailed explanation for this reduction in the DP chaplain program, and sent Rabbi Bernstein and Judge Leventhal, who were instrumental in promoting the idea of using chaplains among the DPs, copies of my letter. In brief, the army officer's strength has been reduced. Now he's giving an explanation. And I could not in good conscience make a case for retaining some of the men who had either developed outside interests or were generally ineffective in their work. What does that mean? It means that a number of the chaplains saw a golden opportunity to make a buck and they devoted themselves almost wholly to that work. Oh, this is something new. And absolutely. And uh, can and you be specific about it? No. But I'm going to say it in my book, you can say it in your book or not. Some of the chaplains, you can quote from this report. Why but don't you? I understand, but now I have uh, the author of it right in front of me, and I don't know what to... You're not going to, you couldn't? What's if you paid me a million dollars, my friend, to give you a name, I will not do it. Well, but I'm not... I'll say it. Okay, now, well, my I'll point... I'll say some of the chaplains... But isn't that, isn't, isn't publishing something like that... Uh, casting uh, uh, a, a doubt on whom? On the entire group of nine? Not at all. Retaining some of the men. Who but, said nine? But who, all right. But how many of them were? We talked about nine, right? Yeah. We're retaining some of them, but we don't know how many. So okay. if we have, if we know the nine names, then they're all under the cloud. I am. I am not going to give you any names. I wouldn't dream of it. 
I mean, we couldn't. If you gave me now, offered me, give me a check for a million dollars. Well, no, I, I'm not. I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned sure about that. But I'm about. interested in look. Uh, but if I, for instance, if what, what you're telling me is this: that instead of uh, logically ending it in 1948 with the establishment of the state of Israel, I really should um, take it uh, a couple of years further until this report was written in 1950. It's been written in 1948. Oh, excuse me, 48, in June of 48. So June of 48 would be the last, uh, last period. Um, yeah, sure. And there were, there were all, there were always people, there were people in the JDC, were, there were people in the JDC, there were people in, uh, there were people in Vat uh, Hatzalah, there were people in all the organizations who had substantial outside interests and made a pile of dough. And I know it. And uh, some of them were really threatened with court martial. Hey. You want history or you want you want fiction or history? I want history. That's what you're getting. And that was a, a, a primary reason. No, it wasn't. It was a it was a it was a reason for for not wanting certain chaplains. That doesn't mean that chaplains did not serve a purpose or they were. They played it. They up to that point had the any not chaplains. They, they played a they played a role after that. That's right. So there are some who were ineffective. There are some who yielded to all kinds of very understandable temptations. He acted, you know how they acted? They acted like human beings. Quote me. They acted like human beings. Partly venal, partly idealistic. I'd like to have, by the way, a, uh, a copy of what I'm just telling you. You will. Please. Uh, because because I, I, this is what I want to say in my book. Why should I repeat this? You've already written it by saying it to you. It's a fact. And so, and I'm not going to, when I talk to, if, if I don't have to talk to uh, Mr. Lifshitz, I'm going to talk to, to Trobe about Lifshitz, because I'm not so quick. Which Trobe? Harold Trobe, Harold. who worked in Austria. This is an exciting story, believe me. Mm -hmm. Instead of making it a, uh, a, um, a book of cliches and book uh, stereotypes. We have human beings, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, variations of human beings. And given given any any assignment, they'll vary. We in our office, we in our office, had an opportunity. Each one of us had an opportunity to walk out of that office of millionaires. We couldn't besmirch the name of. Jewish advisor's office, and they resisted it. And there were some people who did not resist it. There were some chaplains to whom they, who forgot that they were wearing the Ten Commandments, the tablets. Good people, and good Jews, but they had, they saw an opportunity, and, and uh, instead of going around and, and saying, how can I serve others, they were asking themselves, how can I serve myself, because they have a future. The question was, at that point, in 1948, was it really the central work that they were doing? They were always, and I, in 48, I saw essential work, I saw a need for encouraging these people, for even if there weren't problems, you can find problems, you can go around, you can go around to a camp and see a, a broken family, you see a mother weeping, look. Hope, give them hope. That's what we did. Okay. Now, uh, I share my predecessor's view that there is a job. I'm continuing now sure. from the report. I share my predecessor's view that there is a job for chaplains of ability, and have left the matter in such shape that I am free to recommend an increase in the number of DP chaplains, provided the candidates for this type of work are of such caliber that they can be a real service to the DPs. The matter is left open. If we had seen the need... Yeah. And what took place then? I don't recall. I'll have to read further reports. I mean, that much I'm not acquainted with. Uh, the uh, Lev would know. Lev would know what, it, what, what capacity these people served. On the whole, I give them tremendous credit. You know, the question is, what, what, what's the balance? What is it in balance? In balance is, you have a you have a group of dedicated men who subordinated themselves 
uh, who, 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 um, who placed the DP in the welfare of the DPs above everything, worked day and night, dug out problems, called us concerned, weeping, and so forth. Hyman, there's a man who has been arrested. He's been tried for this and that. He, he, he's, uh, he got a sentence which is completely out of line. What can you do about it? Give me the facts. Give it to General Clay. Do you understand? Now, there, there were men like that. Most of the men were like that. Can we be specific about the people and events, if possible? Well, wait a minute. Well, you're talking about most of the people did did good deeds. Right. Or I can only... I can, can we uh, get into specific cases? No. I, I can tell you... I'll, I can give you an example, yes, of men yeah. who were really dedicated. Sp Abe Spira. Chaplain Louis Barish. Rabbi Her Chaplain Herbert Friedman. For the short period that he served in this capacity, uh, thoroughly dedicated, is... Uh, is um, uh, Rack, um, Manuel Rackman. Manuel Rackman. Uh, let, me, let me show you something. I want to show you what does a chaplain do. Here is Herb Friedman, chaplain in Berlin. He, um, I don't know at that time whether he was a member of the Jewish... Uh, yes, he was already, he's already been brought in by Phil Bernstein as his assistant, mm -hmm. along with chaplain Rackman. There's a trial in Landsberg. 21, 21 people are going to be tried. Uh, so 21 people are going to be tried. So they have a defense council, they have a military defense council, they have a Jewish defense council. Friedman, when he goes to sleep at night, he says to himself, no, we got to have another man. we got to have a person who can talk to these people, who has wearing the uniform and can talk to these people. So he inquires of the, he inquires of the uh, judge advocate's office, or a person who is Jewish, who's indicated that he's Jewish, and would be interested in helping the defense of that. And that was you. That was I. Now he got me involved in this. Why? Because he wanted to serve these people. That's all. Now these people were already being served. Mm -hmm. That wasn't enough. This is the kind of initiative. This is the, did he serve as a chaplain? No. Did he serve as a, as a concerned Jew? And then, and, and Herb is, Herb is 100% dedicated. Just 100, if, if it were possible for me to give him a rating of 200%, I'd say 200, 200 and 100 is the same in terms of the percentages. Right. You know, thoroughly, completely. And that's the way he, that's, that's uh, what he did. Now he, uh, these four men I remember very distinctly. I think Lipschitz, by and large, also did a very good job. He represented strength. He was concerned. I, I don't know whether he had a, outside interests. I don't know. I'm going to find out. But if I, if I do find out the truth about him, my recollection on him is very hazy. But if I do find out, I'm not going to mention his name. I wouldn't do it. There is a chaplain. There is a rabbi who is the head of the Oh, I went to Babenhausen. I just spoke to uh, Abe uh, Lasko about that. that. He was there, may have been there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was there as a JDC. Well, he was representing the JDC, so was Kasky. I was, we set up the microphone there. Trying to get the people to walk into that camp, to get into that camp. They saw barbed wire and they said, no, forget it. That's correct. And they finally, all but a hundred, all but a hundred came in when they went in, and the hundred, other hundred were going to be sent back to Poland. And the train has already left the station, and I, called General Keyes, and I said, uh, on second consideration, it's a very risky thing to send them, accompanied only by army, uh, army personnel, and without somebody who can talk their language, with an army officer who can talk their language, and I want to go to Poland with them. So he, he put me in a jeep, and got caught up, for the, called ahead, caught up for the train, and I went to and I slept, I was on that train with them all night long, talking to them. And, uh, and finally at one point they were going to riot. And then I called Keith's office and I said, I abdicate all responsibility unless you let me put them in a camp and waiting for their determination as to where they were going to go. I said, fine, if that's your recommendation, do that. So, so what they, happened? So they they canceled the order. Back? No, they canceled the order. They didn't go back. I, I put them in a, uh, some point, midpoint, is still in the U.S. zone of Germany, 
and they disappeared. I, I, I assured General, General Keyes that I would pick them up and, you know, <laughs> they, didn't, they, they vanished like they should have. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, what, is, what was the role of the chaplain? The chaplain was there with the Ten Commandments assuring them that the, this is, if, the, if, this, if the place were not livable, they would be there only a short time. That's what he did. Well, that was... Yeah. Okay, now, what, what did he learn at the Hebrew Union College or, the Weiss, or, or Stephen Weiser's Institute of Religion qualified him for this work? Concerned man. That's it. That's my contribution to you, is to express that point. Any other point, you're, you're way off. Uh, no, well, I agree with you 100%. No. There's no... Uh, no, there's no conflict. No conflict whatsoever. All right, now you ask me. I, I want to give you the, that background, as a, which I think should be the framework in which you operate. Now, now uh, in terms of sources, what, uh, what uh, do you suggest? I don't know to what extent... I don't, I don't know that you could learn much on this subject that you haven't already gotten from a Plauser. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows if the gun, or for example, in my period, they didn't do any gun running. That was at Berryasset. Uh, Eskin was involved in that. Yes, could be. No, uh, he, he told me this. He's not, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, uh, the JWB, you mean? Uh, no, Herbert Eskin, not Herbert, not Harry Herbert. Oh. Herbert Eskin, who was a, who was a chaplain in Stuttgart. Mm-hmm. Um, a chaplain at Lippmann was... Yeah, um, yeah. Well, he, I'm going to be seeing him in Washington. Uh-huh. I'm going to Washington for three we're, weeks. But very, uh, very little. You're going to, s- to where in Washington? To Waterford. Uh-uh. Nobody suggested that they do this. This was not by design. There was nobody pulling strings and saying, now look, Nobody, no mastermind uh, directed the energies of these men into these channels. These were men who saw a situation and they said to themselves, I have, I have a, a job to do, but it's relatively unimportant. The, the men in the army, they can get along without my advice as to whether or not they should go out with a German girl or or what they should do about the fact that they are not getting the letters from home and so forth. They can take care of their own needs. I'm going to, I'm going to apply my energies. I'm going to devote my time to where the need is greatest. And this is, comes from within. This is the response of the, of the Jew to his family. And this is the lesson of that chapter. Speaking in general terms, but, but that's the message that I would get across. Well, what about specifics um, in terms of if I'm, if I'm going to convey this, yeah. this uh, idea, I have to do it in a specific Surely. way. And one of the problems that I've encountered is that the chaplains, um, because of uh, 30 years, uh, have forgotten specifics. And so if I have somebody like yourself who may remember, perhaps it might be worth I'll tell you what. You see... <clears throat> and you, ha- you can have access to my files. When I, I kept, I kept uh, staybacks. You know what a stayback is? Mm-hmm. They are copies of every thing uh, of, of things that you write. Mm-hmm. I kept, uh, I think, a copy of everything that I wrote during the three and a half year period. Put it together in in, uh, in uh, six volumes six, eight volumes that I have at home. Uh, knowing, you know, when I left uh, the office, in the office advi- when I closed the office advisor in Jewish Affairs, I knew I was going to eventually get around to do this work, this righteous book. If I come across, and I haven't consulted those files, but I had to come back, come over here and now mm-hmm. and do this work here now, to do the research here now. When I now go back,